Welcome to another episode of Blonde in the Kitchen. Today I'm taking over. I will be sharing my recipe for herb infused dough chicken dumplings, also known as pilmeni. To make the herb dumpling dough, I like to use a food processor to chop up all of my herbs. So for this recipe, I'm using parsley and chives, and I add my two tablespoons of oil and salt. All right, so now it's time to make the dough. Add your water, herbs, and your egg, and give it a good mix before adding your flour. Time to mix your dough. I added three cups of flour, but this recipe calls for three and a half cups of flour. That half a cup I leave for later when I pour the dough out onto the board and I start to knead it. That's when I add the rest of the half a cup. This is my favorite part of making dough. I love the kneading process, just adding a little bit more flour as I go. Once you get a ball, add that to a bowl, cover with saran wrap, and leave it somewhere nice and warm for at least an hour. I like to leave it alone for two hours and then it's very soft. What you're going to see me do here is I'm adding kosher salt to my already cleaned chicken. I've trimmed this, it's nice and clean. This is a mixture of chicken thighs and chicken breast. Whenever I make dumplings with meat, I always salt the raw meat beforehand and then give it a good washing. You don't want to leave all that salt because whether you're going to mince it or grind it, that's going to make it too salty. The whole reason and why my grandma taught us to do this is that it pulls out the moisture from the chicken or from whichever meat you use for your dumplings and it gives it so much flavor it's like you're brining it but without the water all right so it's time to make the filling our chicken has sat with the salt for half an hour I gave it a good wash and it's time to grind it up with the onion and the garlic. So in addition to having raw onion in our filling, I like to add cooked onion, fried onion, that's caramelized. So I like to cook this until it's light golden brown and I add that to the filling along with pepper and salt and everything else that we grinded into the chicken, which was the raw onion and the garlic. So give this a mix and cover it up when it's mixed well, set it aside, and it's time to roll our dough. Now that our filling is set aside, it is time to roll out our dough and fold our dumplings. So the first dumpling was our herb dumpling, the second one was our circle pirozok, and the third one is a mini version of the first one. I took our big dough and cut four pieces out of it, so this is a fourth of the dough, and I'm rolling this out to a quarter inch thickness. Now 
now that the dough is rolled out to a quarter inch thickness, cut out circles using a cup or a cookie cutter, whatever you prefer, and fill the dough with a teaspoon to a tablespoon, depending on how much filling you like of filling. And what I like to do when I fold these is I like to pinch the middle, and then once the middle is pinched, I pinch the rest of it. Now it's going to look like a half moon right here, and you could definitely leave them like this. They'll be just as tasty, but I like to pinch the ends together and have a little dumpling. What's left to do now is fold the rest of your dumplings, and I'm also going to show how I make my flat circle shaped dumpling. It's the one that I like to pan fry. You could pan fry these as well, but I prefer to pan fry the flat round ones. Making this shape is really simple. You use two circles, close the sides together, and then once you pinch all of the sides closed, you take your cookie cutter or cup, whatever it is that you're using, to make a perfect circle. So once I cut this, we'll have a perfect circle shape. If you're not planning to eat these right away, you're not going to boil them now, put them on a baking sheet with parchment paper, store them in your freezer for an hour, and place them into a plastic bag once they're frozen. If you're planning to eat them right away, boil some water in a pot with oil, and once it's boiling, add your pilmini or dumplings, however you like to call them, into the boiling water. And I like to stir the water so that they don't get stuck to the bottom. Make sure to stir every couple of minutes so that they don't get stuck to the bottom of the pan or pot. And once they have risen to the top of the pot, let them boil for another minute or two, just to make sure that the meat inside is cooked. These are ready. So when I pull them out, I make sure that the bottom of my bowl has a little bit of oil and I shake the dumplings around in the bowl so that they get coated with oil. That way they won't stick together. For these dumplings, I went ahead and boiled them just like the other ones, but after I boiled them, I went ahead and pan fried them. Once they're golden on both sides, place them on a plate with paper towel so that it absorbs the excess oil and they're ready to eat. Dumplings are tasty any way you have them and I will show you three ways that I like to have chicken dumplings. So the first way is just with some sea salt and parsley. I also like to eat them as a soup. It's delicious. And of course, lastly, I love to make them and eat them pan fried. I want to thank you so much for watching. This was really fun to take over and make something on my mom's channel. I hope you all have enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and give us a comment down below.